Hi, the Mudbrooker here. Today I want to do a video on cast iron bakeware. Cast iron cookware goes far beyond just skillets and Dutch ovens. There was a tremendous amount of bakeware made for use in the oven. There's a wide variety of things. I'm going to start off, well first of all we're going to get to see these corn stick pans and this muffin pan in action a little later. But first off I want to start with these corn stick pans. These were hugely popular, they still are. All the major manufacturers made a corn stick pan. They also made variations that rather than a corn cob, they had a wheat ear design to them. These, I have two of these. These are vintage Wagner ware, crusty corn cob pans, junior. They made two sizes. This is a smaller one, they made a bigger size. And while these are the same pans and they have the same markings, for some reason, is that right set up? Yeah. They put them in a different order on these two pans. I don't know why, they just did. Pans like this, corn stick pans, these vintage Wagners, sell for $20 to $30 usually, $15 to $25 sometimes. But with a little bargain hunting, you can find some very nice pans very inexpensively. This, hopefully you can see that, I paid four, five dollars for. And this is a Wagner pan. It isn't marked, it just says made in the USA and it has the pattern letter on it. But that's a Wagner ware pan and it's identical to these two old ones and that was five dollars. Lodge still makes corn stick pants today. You can buy a brand new one for about $15. This is an older lodge that I recently got. It's got to be cleaned up a little bit and reseasoned. Lodge pans usually aren't marked, although some of them do say lodge on there. Birmingham Stove and Range also made corn stick pans. And this was $3. This is pretty cool. This is a teddy bear pan got that for a couple of dollars. In fact it says teddy pan on the handle. This was made by John Wright. It's made in the USA and there is a huge variety of figures available both old and new cast iron pans. Pretty much anything you can think of. There's fish, dogs, cats, uh, card suits, hearts, spades, clubs, diamonds pretty much anything you can think of, somewhere at some time somebody has made a cast iron bakeware pan out of it. Griswold back in the 20's and 30's also made big three-dimensional cake molds in the shapes of lambs, rabbits, I think they made a Santa head and uh, they're worth quite a bit of money if you're looking to buy one they sell for $150 on up and if you do decide you want to buy something like that do some research first because there are fakes on the market. They're not terribly difficult to spot if you know what you're looking for. The casting isn't nearly as good and they use the wrong style of lettering on it. But if you want to buy a vintage Griswold cake mold like that, I highly recommend that you do a little research before you even go looking. This is a Griswold popover pan. I call it a muffin pan, but officially it's a popover pan. It has 11 cups in it, and this was made probably in the 1940s. Griswold you'll pay a bit more for. I paid $25 for this, but Wagner and Lodge and BSR also made these, and you can find them a good bit cheaper than that if you look around. Uh, Griswold also made corn stick pans. They usually sell for $25 to $40 depending on the size and the design on them. But anyway, you can find a lot of really cool stuff pretty inexpensively. Like I said, I paid a couple three dollars for this. And that teddy bear pan was only two or three dollars and it was five dollars for this little Wagner that I have to clean up. So with a little bit of hunting around, you can find practically anything to bake in made out of cast iron. Give me a few minutes to get rid of this stuff, get it out of the way, and I'm going to make some cornbread with my corn stick pans and my muffin pan. So now I'm going to whip up a batch of cornbread. 
there are a million and six different cornbread recipes out there. This is a pretty basic one and I really like it, but you can go ahead and do whatever you want to if you want to make cornbread. But first, as always, the first and most important ingredient of any recipe is alcohol. And today, I'm going to have a wee bit of red bush. And take a moment to thank my patrons on Patreon, Kay's Kist, Benedict Riggers, Joy Jones, Tiarna Jenkins, Damian Bamer, and Leo. Here's to you guys, and I appreciate your support. Ah, gotta love them Irish. Anyway, this is a pretty big batch. You can cut it in half if you want. I have all of my dry ingredients here. There's two and a half cups of flour, a cup and a half of cornmeal, four teaspoons of baking powder, and about a teaspoon of honey. And to that, I'll add my wet ingredients. Two eggs, a half a cup of melted butter, about three quarters of a cup of honey. And a little bit more. Yeah, that's good. And two cups of buttermilk. Give this all a good mix and get a nice batter going. I want this to be a little bit stiff because I'm going to try something that I have shamelessly stolen from Steve Strong over on Cast Iron Cookware. I'm going to make full size corn sticks rather than just filling one mold like you normally do. You heap it up a little bit and you put another mold over the top of it. That way you get a full round corn stick. Now Stephen preheats his cast iron corn stick pans before he puts the batter in. I've tried it and uh, it does make it a little bit crispier but I usually don't do it because by the time I'm done messing around They've usually cooled off a little bit anyway, so... And it doesn't make a huge difference. You can just go ahead and use them cold if you want. Get them lumps out of there a little bit. Yeah, that looks real good. I gotta grab a spoon and get this out of the way. Now, with really irregularly shaped things like these corn stick pans, you can use cooking spray, but if you're going to use butter, lard, or shortening, it works a lot better if you melt it first and brush it on. Got a little bit much in that one. That way you can work it into all the little nooks and crannies and your cornbread won't stick. And get a little bit on the top too because you'll probably get some that squeezes out in the middle when it rises in the oven. I'll skip ahead a little bit and edit out me buttering up the rest of my stuff. But just make sure you get it worked in there good. You can use cooking spray too if you want to, but 
I generally don't use the stuff anyway, so something liquid works really good for me. Okay, I have everything buttered up good here, both my corn stick pans and my muffin pan. I'm going to start filling these up. Normally, you would fill these corn sticks about level full, but since I want it to rise into the top section, I'm going to put a little extra in so they're kind of heaped up a bit. That's way more extra than I needed. And I'd like to mention, while I'm at it, Cast Iron Cookware Channel. He's an excellent channel and he is a very enthusiastic collector of Birmingham Stove and Range products. If you have any questions about BSR things, he's the man to ask. He's also recently come out with a new product. It's a cast iron seasoning stick with beeswax, grapeseed oil, avocado oil in it. And I had been meaning to try some of the you know, hockey puck type of products for seasoning cast iron. So maybe what I'll do once I get some more pans that need to be seasoned is I'll get a hold of his stuff and a couple of his competitors and do a little review video. But in the meantime, you can certainly keep yourself well entertained by going out and checking his channel. I'll put a link to it down below. Like I said, normally you would fill these about level full and they'll rise a fair bit, but I want these a little bit higher than level. And you also want to make sure that when you set your pans down, when you flop this one over, you want to make sure all your cobs are facing in the right direction. On some types of pans, they all face one direction. On Wagner's and Griswold's, they usually alternate. But whatever the case may be, you want to make sure that you have them end to end in the right direction. Gonna have to add a little bit more to a few of these. Get that out and make sure it's filled out to the ends of the mold. That's a great plenty on that one. should be good for that. Now, carefully line them up and put them together. And now I got to fill up my muffin tin. The muffins you want to fill not quite full, maybe three quarters of the way full. And I'll spare you watching me stand here filling muffin cups. But once I get these filled, I'll put them in a 425 degree oven for 20 to 25 minutes. And then I'll come back when it's time to take them out. Okay, I just put both of those in the oven. As long as I'm over here, I'm going to tease you a bit with this. You'll be seeing more of this in an upcoming video but you just have to wait until it's ready. Okay, these were in a 425 oven degree oven for 20, 22 minutes. And I let them cool for about five, and we'll see how they turned out. There's that one. That came off nice. And I'll tip him out on my rack. Whoops. Come here, you. 
these are hot, so it's kind of tricky to deal with. Now I'll pick a little bit off the edge. And looky there, you got yourself a whole cob. That is really cool. It probably would have worked better if I would have preheated the top one. Or maybe not. This is the first time I've tried this. But they turn out really neat. And, like I said, corn stick pans are pretty inexpensive and easy to find. So if you want to do something like this, you're not going to put out too much money or too much time looking for one. Now for the muffins, we'll just come right out and they're nice and browned on the bottom and crispy on top. Set them aside. Oops, that one wants to crumble a little bit. Yeah, see how nice them brown up on the bottom? Come here, you. Quite enough room on this rack. But at any rate, there you have it. Cast iron bakeware and cornbread. Like I said, go check out the Cast Iron Cookware channel. I'll put the link in the description. And that's it. Get yourself some cast iron bakeware and you're going to have all kinds of fun with it. See you later.